Um, everyone has done uh, amazing work. Um, so we hope that today we can reflect on some of those with you all. So uh, we have put together some highlights. Um, and I would like to start with that we had again in the second uh, round of the program, we had a, a very, very international group. We had really a global representation, as you can see on this uh, world map. And we had 117 women and 126 men, um, really from, an, from uh, the entire globe, but also with all kinds of different backgrounds. So people working in plant biology, but also people working in, in medicine. Uh, so I would like to reflect a bit on, on individual focus, advocacy and outreach. Um, so mo a lot of you have done uh, uh, not only uh, worked with ambassadors, but also you have uh, done uh, individual efforts to um, to uh, yeah advocate uh, good practices in science. So people have given uh, interviews or wrote opinion articles. For example, uh, someone did that in a New Scientist. Uh, we've been, I think, very active, uh, all of you on Twitter, to show what you thought of the program, but also what you have been doing, organizing. Um, local events so i think that's great but also there was a lot of um collaboration because we have this global community people uh, speaking different languages um and uh when sarah from the intersectionality initiative asked uh if people were would uh, were willing to um translate just one page a4 documents but it was five documents i think within an hour she had like responses from from different people and now uh, these uh, guidelines are translated in in four different language four or five different languages which i think is is really great um and i'm, I'm happy to see that this that the elif community ambassadors really is a community and and in that sense works together uh with each other so that's really great um, yeah, then uh, we've also, compared to the first round of the program, we really wanted to make this uh, um, program for you also an opportunity to share and learn skills. So new this year was that we um, had these uh, training sessions for you. Um, so like the reproducibility for everyone workshops, uh, holding a preprint journal club, management, uh, self-management in science, how to make a personal website, uh, science writing skills, survey design, because a lot of you wanted to, uh, to make a survey. Um, so we want to give you really clear guidelines what that entails and what's necessary. Some of you tr decided to pursue, some of you said, okay, well, maybe then, then another media is better for us. Um, advocacy um, um, in general, um, boosting visibility of your outputs, of course, recently by uh, Rowena, and then um, very good introduction to uh, GitHub from, from Naomi. And of course, all the way in the beginning, you may not even remember anymore, more than a year ago, how to use this course. And we had yeah, many more sessions. And I would like to thank everyone who gave these sessions and put the effort in to, to prepare these presentations for you and engaging uh, with you during these sessions. Um, and um, yeah, I would like to also thank uh, the eLife uh, staff here, uh, Naomi, but also Cora who is with us this morning, uh, and Miranda for facilitating these um, because not all of us were ECAC members, so they really had to reach out to people within eLife to, or with, outside eLife even, to ask if they would be willing to, to give a training session for us. And also, which you may not directly see as a training session, uh, but I, I do believe it's, it's training and skills exchange um, are the excellent uh, ECR Wednesday webinars in which this year also more ambassadors were involved and are very, very excellently led and organized by, by Vino, working together with these ambassadors, but also outside the ambassador program, of course. So uh, thank you all for that. And uh, at the beginning of the program, we came together to start some initiatives and work as a group and uh, communicate and 
advocate for better uh, behavior in science. We have so many initiatives, uh, as you can see, which cover most of the part that we are engaging to our day-to-day -day life in science. Um, and um, I'm not going to review most of the names, but that's wonderful to see uh, this, all of these initiatives. Some of them were established from two years ago, but as you can see, many of them were new initiatives that uh, couldn't be happened without you. Yeah, thank you, Lota. And um, I also, also wanted to thank um, all the initiative leads, like everyone who had joined um, different initiatives and also all the initiative leads uh, who had stepped in to support uh, the initiatives and, um, you know, and also contributed for the initiatives. Um, so I, I might not be able to spend the uh, next few minutes reading all of their names, but um, thank you very much uh, for um, your inputs and feedback. And uh, through all of these projects, training and sharing, uh, you have shared uh, very diverse outputs uh, that range from um, something like, you know, uh, learning to collaborate on Google Doc um, or to articulating your uh, roles in um, managing um, and co contributing and producing blogs, websites, and so on. Um, so, um, you know, uh, but um, we, kn we know that these outputs are very, uh, which, which boosts up the um, visibility of ambassadors program. Um, and uh, we want to especially thank everyone who had um, presented uh, in, uh, their initiatives and in, uh, diverse outputs, um, including, um, uh, you know, uh, it, it might be even writing a blog or, you know, joining a webinar or, um, you know, uh, doing a Twitter campaign and so on. And uh, I also wanted to take this moment to uh, say a special thanks to the ECR Live Blog Editors, uh, which is a great team that is uh, working behind bringing all your ideas into um, places where uh, provides a platform where your voices are heard. And I also wanted to thank uh, GitHub and OS of supporters and eLife marketing team for supporting the external events. Uh, um, so also you've been uh, engaging others online on Twitter and other social medias, uh, including the amazing reach of the environmental sustainability, the Lab Waste Day, for example, and the many ambassadors who co author the preprint about improving conferences uh, and raising the awareness uh, about inequalities bullying in academia and all the other issues you advocate about. Um, you've also turned up as yourself uh, with compassion for each other and open minds um, to learn and support each other. Um, that's, that's very beautiful to see and, uh, and we feel very humble uh, by you all <laughs> for your attitude. Um, who have provide us the training and support initiatives and individual ambassadors. We, we really thank you all for, for your work. Doing science is more, is a lot more than just having your papers published. There are many other things. And, you know, so for example, some of, some of these values came up earlier, you know, how, how collaborating, but also, you know, enjoying others, uh, other people's science, how, you know, advancing the scientific enterprise um, as a whole. So these are all very important aspects that, uh, you know, are challenges for us, but that also um, give us, uh, um, give us uh, um, joy. And um, appreciation of science and assessment of science and, and, and research has to be much more than just what is that, you know, one or two or three, these, 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 these published uh, papers. And so it really has to be contributions in many different uh, ways. And what I find really fantastic and, 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 and impressive that you are all taking, you know, time out of your calendar, which I'm sure is just as crammed as anybody um, so I know you all have full-time jobs and pressures and during these turbulent times probably many more concerns than usual 
um, but you are donating some of this precious time to these important causes and to help others where you may not have been helped personally or to provide resources um, that will be a roadmap for other people to bring science closer to your vision and what you think it could be. Um, and all of you have sort of self-selected to be part of this by your common purpose and also by your sort of creative and individual important um, vision. So, you know, again, thank you for being what, what I wish for and what I think more of science should be. So I've, you know, watched again with interest today and learned about how effective your collective actions have been. And I just want to remind you how much impact that even modeling responsible scientific behaviors can have individually. So each of you, by making your values known, you know, making decisions in your scientific lives and in your interactions with other scientists are moving the needle. And this type of grassroots movement, I think, has the power to do so much more than, you know, top down efforts, you know, by a handful of famous scientists. Um, so, you know, just take talking to a few people around you about how to make things better will have, make infinite ripples and spread faster and further. And I think it normalizes better values and behaviors. Um, and so no matter what your favorite initiatives are, you know, every day living your desired principles in science by existing in the version of the world that you would like to see materialize, you are doing the really important work. So it's, you know, there's always more to be done. And I think that generational change has, you know, you know, it's one of the most powerful tools that we have for, you know, mass movement towards improving research culture and publishing, which is why I think it's so important to reach those that are new to science before they become, you know, too cynical. Um, but these are the circles in which many of you are traveling in. So you have an outsized role to play. You know, you have more power to influence change in science, not less, you know. So if you want to um, speak in your own language, uh, you're welcome to do so. Um, the call will be mainly conducted in English, uh, but we encourage anyone to use your language when you're sharing your personal stories, reflections, and gratitude. And we will try to add closed captioning in English um, during the, uh, of, on the recording. Um, so I'd like to maybe start with that. Um, so I would say, Nandri, Yenayim, Yen Tolar Garayim, Uritana Yedatirk, Kondusin Derk, Mikka Nandri. This just means, with the following words, I want to show my gratitude to all your efforts, thoughts, advocacy, and rigorous work you have done as part of ELAF Ambassadors Program. Nandri, gracia, gracias, obrigado, merci, tak, danke, thanks. Uh, I know many of us are not English speaker natively, so I just want to say thank you in my own language. Uh, خیلی خیلی از همه تو ممنونم و امیدوارم با کارهایی که میکنیم در آینده و تغییراتی که ایجاد میکنیم بتونیم جامعه علمی بهتری داشته باشیم و من به شخص بتونم به این روش زحمت های شما رو جبران کنم Thank you so much Yes, so oh, thank you very much for such a lovely session uh, it was very inspirational <laughs> everything that you said uh, i feel very grateful to be part of this community <laughs> um, and yeah we would like to finish this uh, with a video um, in which you can say thank you in your own language uh, also if you don't feel comfortable with it you can turn off <laughs> your video as well uh, but the idea is to to hear you and to feel your presence so if you if you would like to be part of it. Uh, you can clap as well if you if you prefer or, or, or say uh, thank you in your language. But yeah, please. Thanks, all the mail. That's it. Gracias, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.